Hello and welcome to the Hi-Fi Turtle YouTube channel. My name is Ray and today I'm going to be doing a review on the Hegel H20 power amplifier. I recently saw my friend Mark on Hi-Fi do a one-year owner's review of his Macintosh MA5300 and I thought it was a cool video so I'm basically going to do the same thing because I've owned the Hegel for about a year now and I'm going to talk about some things that I like about it, some things I don't like about it. I'll give you a peek inside the amplifier as well. So this is not a demo piece, this is not something Hegel sent me. This is my actual daily driver amplifier that I owned and bought a little over a year ago. There's a lot of technical specs that I'm sure some of you are interested in. so. Uh, they'll be on the screen here for a few seconds, you know, pause it and, and look at those if you want. So this is the Hegel H20, it's a power amplifier. Some of you may not be aware that Hegel makes power amplifiers or separates in general. Hegel, for the most part, sells their integrated series, the H90, 190, 390, etc. And those are wildly popular. But this is just a power amplifier, it looks like a Hegel. It, Hegel's got this look that I like to call Scandinavian minimalism and it, this is no exception. It's very plain look, just uh, sandblasted aluminum all throughout, just the Hegel logo and, and the power button. That's really about it. There's no fancy lights, VU meters, any styling that's like a race car or something. It's really just a, a 55 pound block of polished aluminum. This does come in a black color, but I honestly like the silver color a lot. I think it adds to the character of the amp and you get to see a lot more fine detail in a lighter color like silver versus black. When I initially was shopping for amplifiers, I tried a lot of amplifiers. I tried solid state, tube, class D, class A, class AB, and the Hegel just stood out to me as my best choice. I tried offerings from Macintosh, Sim Audio, Pass Labs, Cord, a few others as well, but this is the this is was the piece for me. I think it blended with my Focal Cantatus just unbelievably well. The closest performer to this, and it's actually a little bit less money, was the SPL S800. The SPL S800 is $4,300 retail. I've seen it discounted quite a bit, so I wouldn't be surprised to see you get it for a little under $3,000, honestly. So it is quite a bit cheaper than this amp, but the difference in cost was worth it to me. But versus the S800, what the Hegel really had in advantage of that was a fullness in the base envelope. So the SPL had really good all around characteristics, but what was lacking was sometimes the base just fell a little flat. It didn't feel like you were in the presence of an instrument or in some chest of your vocals, you weren't in the presence of that singer. It just didn't have that fully fleshed out body on, on, those, on the bass notes. The H20 by comparison is fully fleshed. I listened to Orion by Rodrigo and Gabriella, and drums on that was just so much more present and so much more realistic and lifelike. And if you have a track like Closure by Opeth at the end where all the instruments are coming together and you got b b bongos and you've got uh, these bass lines that all come together and there's tons of instruments just flying across the room, this just brought them all out. They were all popping out of the speaker just beautiful presentation. This also fit my sound profile, which I like a little bit more forward sound, a little bit more analytical and bright. And, and this delivered there as well. When I compared it to the Chord Etude, I I'm, I'm, might be saying that wrong, but the Chord Etude is about the same price and it was much more laid back in the presentation. There was a little bit more sweetness to the, the bass and mid-range versus this, which was a little bit more, you know, cut clean analytical. An obvious comparison here is the Hegel H390, which actually retails for the same price. But I didn't get to try the 390, but I tried the 190, which is a more recent Hegel offering as well, and is $4,000, so really not that shy of the mark. The dealer that I talked to when it came to the, one, the 390 told me that the 190's sound signature was very similar to the 390, but very different to the H20. So I took it home, tried it, and I honestly, I, I didn't like the, the 190, so he told me, if you don't like the 190, you're not gonna like the 390, but I love this amplifier. It's got a really nice weight to it. I mean, it's got a huge toroidal transformer on the inside, which we'll see in a little bit. That adds, I think, the, the majority of the weight to this thing. I think I've read that it's like 33 pounds alone. So this is a 55 pound amplifier, and 33 pounds of that 55 pounds is the toroid alone. So it's quite a serious, a serious toroid. And it's quite a big amplifier. Put up a picture comparison to Big Tortoise 
and uh, you can see even big tortoises, no no match for the size of the Hagel. Other than that, there's not really much else to say about this amplifier. It's just a power amp, so no integrated network streamer, anything DAC like there is on the newer Hagels. The one advantage of it being such an old design as well is since it's been around for so long, there's a lot of these on the used market. I wouldn't be surprised in today's day and age to be able to pick up one in near mint condition for anywhere between like $2,700 to $3,000. But that's all there is about this amplifier. It's a, just a very simple power amplifier. It's very neutral and characteristic. It's got that little bit of forward presence, but it's just a all around well-performing, high-performance amplifier. All right, so like I was saying earlier, we're gonna take a look inside of the amplifier. I took the top off here, just a few hex screws. First thing you're gonna notice is that gigantic toroidal transformer. This is a 1000 VA dual wound toroidal transformer, so it's true dual mono design. Uh, you can see it there compared to my hand, it's uh, quite large. This is the output stage of the amplifier. You see the large transistors and the heatsink, and a few more boards that are inside of the amplifier. Just giving you a look inside. This is the power stage of the amplifier. You can see the power filtering capacitors there. There are no Ver brand, and I'm going to talk about a little bit a little bit about that later. I told you what I liked about this amp so far, and now I'm going to talk about some of the things that I really don't like about this amplifier. And first and foremost is right here on the front plate, and it's this blue LED. And it's also the power button. So the blue LED, as you might be able to see here, is covered with a silver LED blocking sticker, which actually blends perfectly well with the, uh, the silver chassis here. Every manufacturer needs to stop doing this. There's so many other manufacturers that do this. They put these bright blue LED lights on the front panel of their amplifier, DAC, whatever it is. Horrible. Stop. But easily solved with a little sticker. The other thing is the power button. So there's no remote with this. There's no 12 volt trigger. So you got to get up and, and press it. And I know that's a first world problem. It's an American problem. But not so much that you have to get up and, 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 put, and you know, press the button to turn it on. It's that the button itself is just obnoxiously large and kind of just strange looking on, on the chassis. I mean, it kind of looks like a clown nose, right? It's just really big. I get the, the utility of putting it in the front. If you put this in a cabinet, then having the power switch in the front is really nice. You don't have to pull it out, go to the back and flip it on. In the newer Hagels, the power switch is actually on the bottom of the chassis right here and just flip it. And that's actually really nice. I like that design, but they didn't think about that until, until after they had made this amplifier. The second thing is when we looked inside, you'll see that the capacitors for the power filtration are these Novair audio grade power cap uh, capacitors. I've tried to look up Novair and I, I know who they are and you know it's audio grade, although you know I think anybody could claim that something's audio grade and there's you know there's not gonna be a certifying body that says oh yes this is audio grade. When you think of capacitors there are tier one manufacturers and these are manufacturers like ELNA, Nichicon, Rubicon, Vishne. There, there, there's, there's many tier one manufacturers. And really what that means is that their capacitors are high quality, manufactured to last a long time, manufactured to high temperature specs. Just really reliable capacitors. They're not these cheap Chinese capacitors or something that you would find in like low grade equipment. But Novair, to my knowledge, doesn't even have a website. So it's almost impossible to find any information on them. There's very, very, very limited information. And from what I know, all the modern Hegel amplifiers have, are using these Novair capacitors. My amplifier was manufactured in 2018. I've seen some inside pictures of the H20 from way back in the day when it first came out. And the power filtration capacitors are actually Rubicon. And if you noticed in here as well, there were a few Rubicon capacitors in other stages of the amplifier. So I'm not sure why Hegel made this change and honestly I wish they had just stuck with Rubicon. Along with the capacitor change that I noticed, I did email Hegel and ask them if there had been any revisions to this amplifier over the years. I mean, it's been out for 12 years. Have they made any revisions? Are there, is there a difference between my 2018 version and one from 2009? So I emailed Hagel and asked them and they said they could not comment on any revisions that may have or may have not been made to this amplifier. So I, I don't know, I, I, that might signal that there have been a, has been a revision. Certainly in the capacitors because the capacitors from what I've seen are different now than they were. So I don't really know if my 2018 version would sound any different than 
one that was from 2012 or 2010 or 2009. Another thing is just that Hegel in general is they only warranty their products for two years, which is incredibly short. There are some manufacturers like Sim Audio that do 10 years and Bryston that does 20. So I, I really don't know why the only the tier warranty and for a product that's this expensive, I, I would like to see a longer warranty. The other thing that's a little weird with this amplifier too is that the feet themselves are just solid aluminum. There's no like rubber or, or felt or anything on the bottom of the feet. They're just solid aluminum. It's weird that they don't have like a rubber foot or a, a felt foot or something like that. So you got to be careful with your rack if it's just a wooden rack or a leather rack or something like that. Uh, if you're pushing it in, you could accidentally damage or mark your, your rack because they're bare feet. They don't have any protective rubber or felt. That's do it for me. That's my ownership review of the Hegel H20. I love this amplifier. It's a mainstay for me. It's I have no reason to want to upgrade from this amplifier. It really is a great amplifier. Let me know in the comments below if you enjoyed this video. Make sure you like and subscribe. It really helps me out. Check out the links below in the description for my Patreon and some other links that will help the channel out. Really appreciate you watching and I will see you in the next one.